السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ When we look at Einstein's theory of relativity, we learn that there is a unique relationship between time, space, mass, energy, and gravity. All of these things are very relative. If any of the variable is changed, things change. The value of gravity is not the same on Earth as it's on Moon. Time doesn't flow at the same rate on other places in the universe as it is on the planet Earth. If you travel by the speed of light, you can cover distance in approximately no time. So, there are a lot of factors that we have to keep in mind, considering that when we start looking at the ayahs in the Holy Quran, the stories in the Quran, a lot of things start to open up for us. For example, Today I want to talk about a concept that has been expressed in several different places in the Quran which is called Al-Tay Uz-Zaman that means the time travel or you are basically going through the phase where things are moving for you relatively at a different pace than it is moving for others. For example, we looked at the story of Sayyidina Uzair alayhi salam where he slept for a 100 years time and when he woke up for him it was a day or half a day whatever it is that he thought his body didn't change as it should have changed in a hundred years and but his food and drink they did not even experience a single second has passed on them Lam nothing no changed no change they witnessed. But on the other hand, donkey saw the same time the rest of the world saw of a 100 years. But at the same time, we, as we spoke about last time, Uzair alayhi salam witnessed the flow of the time with his awakened eyes that the process of birth to growing up was basically done in a fashion that was like fast forward for him. He saw the donkey being raised back to life. Think about it. Imagine something that would happen in the matter of years happened for him in the matter of no time. As he saw the dust getting collected, transforming into bones and the bones receiving the muscles, the flesh and skin and then soul and the donkey standing in front of his eyes as it was a hundred years ago subhanallah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as says that on the day of judgment we will raise you back to life or zayr alayhi salam witness all of that with his own eyes and the movement of time was extremely different for the donkey as it was for the Uzair alayhi salam because Uzair alayhi salam is back in the normal life after he woke up after a hundred years but now the donkey is living a very fast forward life it's in a totally different time and then once the formation is completed he's moved back in the same time zone and the same time frame as everybody else around him this is one story we looked at last time. There is another story that Quran talks about in Surah Al-Kahf, the people of the cave. Now remember, in Arabic language, there are two distinct words for cave. One is called Ghar and one is called Kahf. Both are mentioned in the Quran. Where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is traveling with Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and is going to Medina and they were in a cave and they stayed there for three days. And when talking about that particular cave, the cave of Thor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the term Ghar in the Quran. But when talks about the people of the cave in Al-Kahf uses the word Al-Kahf, that takes you to the point where you're like, okay, then what is the difference between the two? Ghar is a small cave. And Kahf is a big cave in which several people can very comfortably stay. And that is the cave that was picked by the people of the cave. Without going into much detail, because that's for another day when we can talk about the details of the people of the cave. Now, people of the cave slept for 
300 solar years and 309 lunar years because every 100 years of solar equals to 103 years of lunar. So for 300 solar years, they slept. But when they woke up, the surrounding world had experienced 300 years. But to them, it was just a day or half a day. As if living in the same world, they were living in a different dimension. They time traveled 300 years. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that they were taking turns when they were sleeping. If you would look at them, you would think that they are awake. They were in a very different state of sleep. There are many things to unfold from the explanation of this particular incident mentioned in the Quran or story mentioned in the Quran. What does it mean if you look at them, you will think that they are awake? Yet they're sleeping for 300 years. They're traveling through the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the whole environment was created as such that if you would look, you would run away, scared. What's going on? What is happening? It was out of norm. If you would have looked at people sleeping in a cave, that wouldn't cause you to run away from the situation. But there must be something extraordinary happening in that cave alone that even the movement of sun was altered for them. It wasn't the position of the cave, it was the position of the sun that was altered. If you look at the ayahs of the Quran, the Quran doesn't say the cave was located in such a way that the sunlight would shy away. Rather, Allah says, sun would shy away from the entrance of this at the sunrise and at the sunset. So something extraordinary was happening with the movement of the sun. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called this particular movement of the sun or the change in the movement of the sun as an ayah, as a sign. Otherwise, if the placement of cave was such that that the sun would shy away, would not be considered and mentioned as a sign. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a lot of things that he has told us in the Holy Quran. It is just like we have not yet reached a point of knowledge where we can comprehend and understand. So these are the people that witnessed that. And when they woke up, they didn't even realize because nothing has changed on their bodies as if they have slept a day ago. That's the only alteration that they saw as a person would see in half a day or a day. But when they went out and they met the people surrounding them, the cities have changed. The currency has changed. The kings have changed. The fates have changed. They, when they went to sleep, it was a tyrant, disbeliever king that was ruling. And when they woke up, there were the believers around, surrounded by, they were surrounded by the believers and the believing king. So he, they, 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 it was a total change of course when they woke up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that for a reason. That's not the point here. Because even in the last uh, um, uh, video that I released for you guys, people were saying like, you didn't get to some of the points that, because that was not the point. We will have other videos to describe those points. So that's why to keep focus on this particular incident, look at it from the relative nature of the time. Inshallah, in the next coming days, we will talk about the relative nature of the space with you and how Quran describes that. Now, looking at these things, it is very easy to understand when Allah says that you do not understand the life of the martyrs. They are alive in their graves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them and the person wonders how. And this story tells you how things can happen in a different dimension in the world of Barzakh and how the people in the Barzakh are so very connected with their graves. That's for another time when we start exploring the life in Barzakh. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.